As you guys can notice, I got a haircut. Shout out to my mom. Great, great job. I was actually gonna come in here and like, you know, feel myself and like tell you guys how I feel and look good. But then I realized that with this beard, I kind of look like the Beast Titan from Attack on Titan. So it's kind of funny how you could go from morale boosting self-confidence to crippling self-consciousness in a matter of a split second. But anyways, it doesn't matter. Love yourself. Yay! Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting sneaker review. And it's another banger from New Balance, which of course I promised in my previous review of the Shoe Palace New Balance Great Whites. You guys can watch that in the eye after this video. When I first saw this sneaker, I knew I had to have them because they're a collaboration with one of the most notorious sneaker shops in Japan, along with someone who I considered as the forerunner of sneaker culture as we know it. But before we get started, if you haven't yet, please do consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help a lot. This channel actually just hit 300. Yay! Thanks guys! But even with that milestone, almost 80% of you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet. So that could mean that there's a lot of you guys that come back to my channel, watch my stuff, but haven't subscribed yet. Or there's a lot of new people out there. Hi, how you doing? My goal is to reach a thousand subscribers so that I can enroll in the YouTube Partner Program and hopefully get paid for doing something that I love, which is making videos like this. Oh, and at 500, I'm gonna eat this guy. Lil Nitro, the hottest gummy bear in the world, records at about 9 million Scovilles, which is 900 times hotter than a jalapeno. Jalapeno? How do you pronounce that? Jalapeno face. Sorry. But regardless whether you guys want to see me cry over a little gummy bear, if you haven't yet or if you're new to the channel, I hope you guys can consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help a lot. Please do thank you. Alright, without further ado, let's jump right into my review, my first impressions, and my honest opinions on the New Balance X Racer Atmos Staple Pigeon collaboration. So this three-way collaboration between Atmos Japan, Staple Pigeon, and New Balance released exclusively via raffle on the Atmos Japan website and via the Atmos booth during the Complex Land online convention in November last year. Just like the Sean Witherspoon Atmos collaboration on the A6 Gel 3s, this shoe also pays homage to the home cities of each designer, Tokyo Japan for Atmos and New York City for Staple Pigeon. The two sneaker titans added their own hits and stylings to the New Balance X Racer, which is actually perfect because this sneaker is made for trekking and roaming around urban cities such as Tokyo and New York. Jumping right into the details of the sneaker, the upper is a mix of different fabrics and the overall color combination of black, gray, purple, and pink. Majority of the upper is in this ripstop textile material that you see gradients from bright pink at the heel to white towards the middle of the shoe and then abruptly turns to black right at the toe box. You also have different panels of gray and black suede that goes all around the shoe and even onto the toe box. I think this really adds to the ruggedness of the overall shoe. The sneaker was also treated with some nice reflective hits, starting off with the one that lines the suede panels, the New Balance N in purple found on both sides of the sneaker, and the X Racer tag found on the top of the tongue with the lace loop at the bottom. This accent not only adds a nice pop of color with the brightness, but also adds a literal shine when the light hits it at the right spot. Also, the sneaker comes with black rope laces with those same reflective hits, but I switched it out for the pink laces because personally, I just love the contrast that it gave off. At the back of the shoe, you get the rubber panel that has the heel tab and the embossed New Balance logo. Both insoles of the shoe come in pink with the half cut design of the staple Atmos logos on it in white. The whole upper sits on top of New Balance's Absorb midsole which gives a great cushion and comfortable ride along with the rubber outsole that has this almost hiker boot like pattern because like I mentioned the X Racer is meant to be a trekking silhouette. Now I get the design of the outsole is meant to help you from slipping and also to get a better grip on the ground you're walking on. But one thing I don't understand is this little extension right here at the heel. Maybe it's a trekking slash hiking thing I don't know of. Maybe it's just meant for aesthetics. I can't figure out what the performance aspect of it would be. So leave a comment down below if you guys know what this can be for because clearly I have no idea. Lastly, we have the signature details that are meant to represent each individual brand. Starting off with the elephant print on the leather on the toe and that external lace loop that's meant to give you extra lockdown. I honestly didn't realize that it was elephant print at first because the design is in black. But of course it had to be that design just like Atmos did with their Nike collaboration on the Air Max 1. Another Atmos hit that we see is the black fur material on the tongue 
which is also reminiscent of another Atmos Nike collaboration on the Animal Pack Air Maxes. And of course, my favorite detail on the sneaker is the two embroidered birds at the heel, which is a classic staple hit. We have the crow on the right shoe, which is meant to represent Atmos Tokyo. And of course, on the left shoe, we have the infamous staple pigeon logo, just like we see on the Nike SP staple pigeons that not only shocked New York City on its release, but the whole sneaker game itself. As for sizing, big disclaimer, my foot's length is an 11.5, but because I have wide feet, I always wear a 12. New Balances are notorious for running a little bit big. I think the X-Racer is safer to go your true to size, rather than going down half a size for a reason I'll mention in a bit. But of course, your safest bet is trying on a general release X-Racer, anywhere you can find New Balances so that you get your perfect fit before copying this colorway. Now for the part where I give my thoughts and honest opinions on the sneaker, and right off the bat, I have to start with this. This isn't the most comfortable sneaker that I've ever worn, and personally, I'm kind of disappointed. Oh. My 997S Great Whites, amazing. My regular 997 Authors that I've had for years, I love them. But these guys? they kind of feel weird. The closest thing I could think of to these on feet are soccer or football cleats. You could feel the narrowness of the shoe right here hit the arc of your foot. It's not exactly painful, so to speak. It doesn't hurt at all. It's just something that I'm not used to in a lifestyle sneaker. By the way, when I first had them on, my brother Adrian told me that they looked like soccer or football cleats, and I kind of see why, because it is so spiky. But going back to this issue and the overall outsole in general, maybe because it's a trekking shoe, the X-Racer is modeled after old hiking shoes, Maybe it's because I haven't worn them enough. I can't exactly go out right now. Stay at home, wash your hands, wear a mask, get vaccinated when you have the chance. I really don't understand the fit, but again, it's really not painful at all. It's just something different. Try on a pair for yourself. I bet you guys will understand what I'm talking about. Other than that detail that I had to point out, because of course, comfort over everything, I really dig the aesthetics of the sneaker. The contrasting hues of the bright pinks and whites with the dark purples, black, and gray. It looks so nice to me because of all the dark shades. It's a sneaker that's kind of subtle but because of the brighter colors it's a sneaker that stands out I know that's two contrasting ideals but this is pretty much what this is and just like I said with my great whites I'm not a big fan of lace swaps but for those and these guys it just did the colorway so much justice I had to and of course the best part of all it's a collaboration between Atmos and Staple Pigeon you guys saw that newspaper article that I flashed earlier that really happened because of this tiny little bird right here Jeff Staple is a storyteller so is Atmos in a sense but man you guys know I have a a soft spot for some sneaker history. You could tell in my unboxing of these that when I saw all the details, I wasn't really sure at first, but when I put two and two together for the fake fur and the elephant print, my mind was just <laughs> But backtracking a little bit, it's really amazing how this little birdie right here had such a huge impact on sneaker culture today. I mentioned this before and I still believe it. Jeff Staple is one of the forerunners and pioneers of the sneaker game, not only back then, but it's even evident now, as you can see in the sneaker. Granted that we wouldn't have this collaboration without Atmos as well, and they did have a great, great impact on the sneaker culture in Japan, but you guys get what I mean. Overall, even though they don't feel the best, I'm still kind of disappointed in that. I guess it's just a case of what we call here in the Philippines, the Isganda. It loosely translates to you look good, but you don't feel good, but they're not painful at all, I promise. It just doesn't make the cut for my comfy boy list. Aww. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of both Atmos and Staple Pigeon, not only as individual brands, but as collaborators. I'm currently on the hunt for the Atmos Air Max 1s. Those are definitely a grail. As I mentioned, I have the Sean Witherspoon Atmos A6 collaboration. Thank God I was able to jump on my own pair of Black Pigeons right before the SB craze started hyping up again. And I have these bad boys in my collection, which I'm really, really happy about. And lucky for me, this isn't gonna be the last collaboration that I review between Staple and Atmos, which you guys will see in a future video, so definitely stay tuned to the channel. So that is my review of the Staple Pigeon Atmos collaboration on the New Balance X Racers. What do you guys think? If you guys have a pair of X Racers, do you guys know what I mean? What do you guys think of the collaboration in general? Leave a comment down below. I love conversing with you guys there. Follow me on Instagram at Albi Peralta. I'm a bit more personal there. I post stories almost every day and I post when I have a new video out here on YouTube. So that's one way to get notified. Other than of course, subscribing to the channel, guys, it really does help a lot. And of course, check out my other videos on this channel. I have a lot more sneaker reviews, travel vlogs, personal vlogs, unboxing videos, anything and everything in between will be on my channel. And that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys when I see you. Bye guys.